The safe haven. Your home away from home. A chance to stop worrying about the troubles of the universe and put your feet up for a while. Without even realising it, it appears that the safe haven has become one of my favourite facets of video games. Sure, you could just boot up the next mission and get on with it, but where's the rush? It may seem like little more than a momentary distraction, but getting the safe haven right can be the difference between a game that you play periodically and a game that you play for an entire weekend and establish a real personal connection with. Not every game needs one, and not having one will hardly break a game, but it could make it. Briefly lowering the stakes and taking a break from the action can make the core gameplay that much better. However, the safe haven is providing a function, and simply having one in and of itself isn't quite enough. So, with this in mind, I've come up with two rules that a safe haven must follow in order to be truly effective. First, it must be mandatory. Now this may seem counterintuitive, but remember, the main purpose of the safe haven isn't to give the player a break per se, but to provide a change of pace. If the player really wanted to take a break, they would simply turn the game off. The safe haven is more of a chance to lower the stakes and relax a little. Nobody's trying to kill you, and you're free to just run around with the same controls at ease. By all means, give the player the ability to start the next mission right away if that's what they'd prefer. That would even allow the player to dictate the pace for themselves. But it's surprising how even the most boring of tasks can become welcome after a frantic mission. Which leads us to the second rule. You should give the player something to do that doesn't involve the typical gameplay. The common approach is to talk with your allies, though it can also include fetch quests and minigames. As long as it doesn't take too long, there's something to be said for slightly switching off your brain for a moment and getting lost in the same routine after each mission. Ideally, the things that you're doing will still carry over into the main game in some way, whether side quests are opened up or you gain levels and resources, making the time spent in these activities feel more worthwhile. Not following one of these two rules can result in safe havens that, while still somewhat functional, are not completely ideal. Metal Gear Solid 5, for example, sometimes forces you to return to Mother Base, though after you've watched the cutscene, there's little reason to stay. Sure, you can shoot at targets and beat up your crew, but that is essentially more of what you're doing in the main missions, and while you may need a shower, quite quickly you'll find yourself just heading off on your helicopter again. Firelink Shrine and Dark Souls, on the other hand, has plenty of characters to talk to, which can unlock some side quests. But while there are some spells to buy, and you'll certainly pass by here from time to time, returning here isn't really mandatory until much later on in the game, and until you have the ability to warp, it is a little bit out of the way, resulting in only the most die-hard of players returning, with any regularity. Dark Souls is a fairly open game, however, and the nature of open world games renders the need for a safe haven almost obsolete. Because if the practical function of a safe haven is to essentially act as a hub, connecting the player to the next mission, then that function is already being served by the open world itself, just on a much larger scale. While a safe haven isn't impossible here, it is going to have an effect on the world and gameplay, such as in Dark Souls 2, where you have the ability to warp from the very beginning which while definitely useful, does mean that you're maybe not developing as much of a relationship with the world as you did in Dark Souls. However, there is an interesting twist in the trope found in Dark Souls 2, as the game doesn't force you to return to Medulla by taking control away from you like in, say, X-Men Legends or Mass Effect, but you do have to head there manually if you want to level up or upgrade weapons. You can twist the trope further by only giving the player partial control when they head back into the field. Sure, games like XCOM and Massive Chalice let you decide when to advance time, but you'll often wish you had more time to finish research before the next battle begins. Regardless of what form it takes, getting the safe haven right can make it much easier to control certain aspects of your game like the pacing or story. If your game feels a little too repetitive, for example, maybe it's the one addition that it needs. Though having said all that, there is one further twist on the trope you can utilise after establishing your safe environment. Blow it up. Because you were never safe, and you were foolish for ever thinking that you were.